Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Trish. Who is ready to dance with me into the weekend? You ready for this short tutorial? So without further ado, let's jump right into this. So guys, the first thing that we want to do is to pick a text. So I'm going to click on my type text tool and I'm going to type in the word dance. So to scale, I'm going to click on my text and with my move tool selected, I'm going to hold on my shift and I'm going to scale my text like so. So the next thing is to put the subject in front of our text and somehow weave our subject in between the text. So to do that, we first want to add a little bit of an effect to our text. So I'm going to double click on the right hand side of my text and I want to add a stroke effect and I'm going to double click and I want to keep my stroke effect to three and I'm doing an outside position. I'm going to click OK. And what we need to do is to right click and convert this text to a smart object and not a shape. If you convert it to a shape and you bring your subject in front and you try to weave it in between, it will pick up on the outline of the text and you don't want that. So you want to convert your text into a smart object. And then what we are going to do is that we want to make a duplicate of our background. So I'm going to drag my layer to the plus icon. I've made a duplicate. I'm going to click on the first subject layer and I'm going to pick my quick select tool and I'm going to click on select subject. Now Photoshop's quickly cuts out the subject for you. Sometimes you might have to go in and fix it, but I think this is good. The next thing that we are going to do before we pull our subject in front is that you want to go to your select and you want to inverse your selection. So now we are basically selecting everything outside of our subject. And before we add the layer max, I see that this area is not selected. So with my add to selection, I'm just going to quickly make a selection around this area. I'm going to subtract and I'm going to use my lasso tool and I'm going to gauge and add this area of his shoe. So we have something like this. Now I'm going to go to my dance text layer and then I'm going to add a layer max. Now notice what happens. The subject now is seen in front because we added a layer max. Now the next thing is what if I want to weave my subject in between? So what you can do is that you want to click on your text layer, holding down your command key, and then you want to make a selection. So now that we have our text selected, you want to make sure that you have your layer max selected and with our brush tool selected, we want to make sure that our foreground is white because white reveals and we want to reveal a portion of our text in front of our subject and in some cases behind the subject. So I'm going to paint in this area to reveal the red for this portion of our subject like so. And I'm going to do the same thing in this area as well. And as you paint, you might have to reduce your brush so you don't paint over the other area that is close to it, like this area. Now over here, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to paint over this area and that area as well. So that is as though we have our subject weaving in between our text. So this is basically what we have now. I'm going to press command D to deselect. So we have this very cool effect 
happening. Now, the other thing that I want to do is to change the background so that our subject and the text pops. So to do that, we are going to create a new layer. So I'm going to double click this and name it background. And then I'm going to name this subject. So I'm going to click on my background and I'm going to add a new layer by clicking on the plus icon. It creates a new layer for me. Now I want to flip my foreground to this almost navy bluish color and I'm going to pick my marquee, my rectangular marquee tool. I want to just make a selection of the top portion to exactly where we have the foot of our subject like so. And with my paint bucket, I'm going to fill that in. But notice that even though I've applied it, it's not showing because this subject layer still has a background. So to get rid of the background, we are going to go ahead and click on select subject and we're going to select our subject layer. We're going to add a layer max and that takes off the background for me. So we have something like this, but notice that if we zoom in, you notice that his foot area is gone. So what we're going to do is pick our lasso tool and we are just going to basically draw it back in like so. And I'm going to click on my layer max and I'm going to make sure my foreground is white, white reveals. And with my paint brush, I'm going to paint in to reveal his foot. So command D to deselect. I'm going to zoom out so we can see. This looks good. Now, if you have time, you can go in and then basically what we want to do, use our marquee tool and we are basically going to cut out this area. I'm going to zoom out so we can see it. So it's as though our subject is grabbing onto the alphabet C. Now, the other thing that you want to take note of is we want our subject to pop. So to do that, we want to add a gradient effect only on the background, not on the floor. So to do that, we want to hold down our command, select only our background, add an adjustment gradient, double click on our gradient. Now the color option shows up. We want to click on the stop once, click on your color, change that to white. And we, we're just going to click. Okay. We want to change linear to radar. So we have uh, a spot in the middle. Now we want to reverse it. Now we want to increase it a little. So we have a bit of a good spread like so. We have something like this and we can just go ahead and click OK. I want it to pop a little more. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now, if you want your stroke effect to be more pronounced, you can double click back on your text and we can go back to our stroke and increase it. But notice what happens. The stroke effect has also been applied to the subject and that is not what we want. If you want a thicker stroke effect, you need to apply it before you change your text into an object. So just take note of that. So now that we have this, we are basically done. But what if we have a shadow effect on the floor that will give us that little bit of a punch to complete this simple tutorial. So what I'm going to do is that we want to make a copy of everything so we can reflect that on the floor. So we're going to click on all four of these and we are going to make a duplicate. And then I'm going to right click and convert all of that into one file. And then with my move tool, I'm going to move that down. So it gives me that reflection on the floor and I'm going to move it up a little to fill up the gap in between like that. 
And then we want to pick our, we want to reduce the opacity. We're going to do something like this. And then the last thing we want to do is to add a gradient effect so that we have a gradual fading effect from the front. I'm going to add a layer max. I'm going to pick my paint bucket, but I'm going to change it to the gradient tool. And with my foreground and background as black and white, I'm just going to draw a straight line like that. And that basically gives me the gradual effect. That is it, guys. So... I hope you found this tutorial very fun. I wanted to give you guys something very short, sweet, and to the point. And I think I did just that. So, till next time, please like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell for all future uploads. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.